on Beatmaker the Hitmaker. Welcome, everybody. I'm excited to be here with my boy, G.A. Bro, my brother. Millennial mentor, uh, built one of the top media companies on the planet for millennials, and it got acquired by a billion-dollar company last year. That's, that's, I mean, that's huge, um, and I'm excited to connect, man. We, we've been talking a lot yeah. about the new economy, the new era, how to really help millennials take their game to a whole new level. And it's not even about us anymore. We're out here, it's like 1.30 in the morning, shooting videos because we really wanna help people change the game. So uh, thanks for being here, I'm excited. So I wanna start with this, man. You have something that you've coined, it's a new term that you haven't even talked about ever. It's, yeah. I, I feel like it's revolutionary. <laughs> I want you to bring it to the viewers now, talk about what you feel is the future of entrepreneurship. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I coined a, a new term. I haven't announced it yet, so no better way than to do it right now with the Game Changers um, Academy, with all the Game Changers out there. It's, it's something called social currency. Um, it's something I'm coming out with in January. It's something that I feel like it's, it's like a, a whole new way of, of having influence. And it's, it's, this, it's this currency right now that, like, you're seeing how powerful it really is for millennials. Like, all these big big brands that were handed down to us, right? They're all trying to get to the millennial, you know, generation. And, you know, we, the way we resonate with brands nowadays is different. The way we trust, it has to be like so authentic eye to eye with brands and personal branding is just so important. It's something that, you know, I've really was able to, to go all in on after the acquisition of Elite Daily. I kind of got stuck, right? Like I didn't really know you know what to really do next but i knew that i wanted to impact more that was and your it, baby too it's it cool. was like you were all in on that a hundred percent all in on that i mean look it was my life i never looked at myself as a brand it was all just elite daily you know what i mean and so like after it was like wow like i don't have my baby anymore you know and you know it was it was really really tough but i knew that i wanted to impact more especially with this generation. I wanted to be able to share my story, to share my failures, my mistakes, my successes, all of that, and then be able to leverage that to impact more. And then what happens is, is that when you really start to lose the fear of what people will think of you and really foster like your story and like your gifts and you know, really get out there, feel comfortable with putting yourself out there and you start using these see these specific tactics that I've used over the past year and a half. When you use that strategy, all of a sudden you really start to build your social currency, your influence, and you impact more people than ever when you're able to build that up. And uh, I've been able to leverage it to, to for like things that it's just unbelievable with founders to I'm speaking globally, internationally, getting paid to speak globally. I'm contributing to some of the biggest. Well. Yeah, I mean, listen, I just got flown first class to go to Formula One F1, got paid for that. I just got a huge, one of the biggest car companies in the world to pay me $30,000 to help them brand their a, a new commercial for their car. I'm getting exotic cars when I'm traveling. Um, it's it's like, I'm, mo, mo, the, I think the most important, one of the most important things other than, you know, the income, the freedom, the traveling, you know, all of those great things. The, the One of the best things about it is relationships, right? Like my circle of influence has grown so, like exponentially. I've had amazing relationships throughout my career as an entrepreneur 13 years but when I really started focusing on my personal brand and building that social currency like the the, the it's like worth billions like everybody you talk about it right like world-class like the amount of world-class individuals that are now in my circle of influence because I've built up that circle of, you know that social currency and I put myself out there 
It's unbelievable. So it's allowed me now to do so much more. And this whole millennial generation, what we talk about, is all about uplifting each other. It's all about empowering one another. Like It's all about wanting to see each other succeed. And we all have a different story. We all have different gifts. One of my first mentors in my life told me that he was never an expert at one thing. He was an expert of experts. And it, it kind of like made me think about how important it is to surround yourself with people that have different strengths. You know what I mean? And like, you know, you learn from them, you know, and, and honestly, um, that's what this is all about. It's, it's, it's my strategy on how I've been able to level up, build my social currency, build my influence to impact more. And that's only li- led to more income, more relationships, and the list goes on and on. You've built your influence quick, quicker than most people. So obviously the formula works. Yeah. I know your past. I know that you have failed your way to success as I have. Yeah. You were not handed a golden spoon. You were not placed in a, a business where everything was easy. You had to grind hard. You had a tough past. So people could be watching Gerard and they could say, yeah, but Gerard can do it because he had this. So he had this and he was already successful and he has this and this and this. His Instagram's going crazy because he's Gerard. That's easy to say. And I, I, I've been that place where it's hard to relate to people. So how do you tell these millennials that are that are new to success, they have a nine to five, or they don't have any social currency, and they're excited because they see you thriving and they respect you, but they don't know what steps to take. They don't know how to build social currency. What's kind of like the framework, if you can give some context of yeah. well, how should they start? I mean, look, the very, not it's not, it's definitely not easy. I mean, look, it's, it's you, you talk about this, right? Like the very, very first step, is to let go of all fear and let go of all ego. Yep. Those are two main first steps. When you let go of all fear of realizing like, you know what, I'm gonna just be myself, I'm gonna what you talk about, right? Like, we, you know, I, I'm, I'm rocking it because of, of you, right? When you do, when you really truly do get, you know yourself, like let go of what people think of you, let go of what peop- you think you should be like, what people tell you you should be like, you know, and just start, just really look inside of you as to like, who are you? What do you stand for? And you know, and just be yourself. That's like the very first thing. I care about what people, how people are going to judge you because most of the time, believe it or not, your immediate friends and the people that know you are going to judge you. They're going to say like, what are you doing? Why did you change? I had my, everybody around me was like, sometimes ask me questions like, what do you like have a photographer all the time now? And they started asking questions like, you got to let go of all that. You know, you're doing this for yourself, it's lose all when fear. Than, when you do better than them sometimes. Right. Or you're doing things that they haven't done. Different. Yeah. You know, and that's what it's all about. You need to find your differentiator. You need to be different. That's how you stand out. And then you have to lose ego. Like, you have to realize, because you're not going to get anywhere without collaboration. You just, you, and if you really want to grow your, that brand, you need to learn how to collaborate and you have to let go of ego. So many people think that the way to success is by you know, doing it alone, not sharing their, not sharing, you know, what's on their mind, their ideas, you know, their gifts, their, their thoughts, you know, they, they, or, and, and they think they know it all. Like you can't, you don't know it all, right? You need to be able to put yourself out there, drop the ego. Those are like the two first steps. And then, you know, honestly, we start getting a lot more tactical, right? There's, a, there's specific platforms and there's specific strategies to all those platforms that I've mastered. Everything from like actually building your own writing and blogging and things like that. You know, we, Elite Daily, I was able to to take that to a whole nother level. We then a building and publication of 80 million unique visitors, but still learning from that and how you can do that for your own personal brand. And then Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, Facebook. I mean, what are a couple of your favorites now that you feel are going to blow up in the next couple next. Six months to a year. You know, it's interesting. Um, I don't have particularly one favorite right now because I really just love Matt. Like, I, I love those five, to be honest. I love video content and, and blogging, vlogging, which is so important. YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and not in that order. They all are different platforms for different reasons. Engagement different ways of engaging, different types of content. Some some platforms you need to have videos that are 30 seconds, 60 seconds, some, you know, two minutes to four minutes, some you can have 10 minutes to 20 minutes longer form content. You know, the way you cut the content, it needs to be different. You know, everything from your pictures to your quotes, to your captions, to the way you word things, your titles, clickbait. I mean, there's so many different 
you know, then stuff, you know, ways to boost it, organic ways to get it viral. I mean, there's all those different tactics, but you really need to learn how to master each one of those platforms for what they're made to do. And what you've done that, that, that I've done as well that I didn't do the right the first time is I tried to be good at all of them at once. Yeah. And then what happens is you're mediocre at all of them. So now it's focused on how does, how does this platform work? What's the algorithm? How do you maximize the engagement, the consistency? One thing I want to say that you've done well that I've, because we've been together quite a bit the last yeah. three months. Word. Protect your brand. Gerard loves the people he impacts because he feels like that's the future as I do. You post consistently, you mm -hmm. post every day, and if you don't, it frustrates you. It's not like, ah, oh, whatever, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. You're like, this is my reputation, this is my brand. Most people don't care enough. They're like, oh, I'll post next week, I'll post tomorrow. 100%. You see these brands, they go all in for a week, then they're off for a week. Yep. And they're all in for two days, then they're off for three days. And I don't think people, if you really want to attract the tribe that respects you, how important do you feel consistency is as far as like a platform? It is absolutely everything. Listen, we are living with technology in a global market. You have to look at, the, it's global. Like people are up, it's 20, it's literally 24 hours, 365, seven days a week. People are out there and they're looking for you. They're looking for your gifts. They're looking for your content. They're looking to find you. Like So the only way that you're going to be discovered and build that social currency is by consistently doing it day in, day out, and at specific times. Like There's, there's specific time frames that you need to be getting that content out. Um, consistently on those platforms. I don't think people realize how, how dialed in you are though with the brand. They think, oh, George, just lucky. No, you're very consistent on when you post, why you do it. Oh, yeah. Like you have a team that knows when to post. Yeah, and it's all been testing. I mean, these are things that I've like literally have spent like literally hundreds of thousands of dollars from the from like the series leaders, create leaders. Like that cost me like a lot of money to the boosting post, to hiring my content team, you know, like, there's been a lot of things that I've had to do over a long period of time to like really test all of this stuff out. Um, and that's why I'm excited to really, really share it. Um, How people cut their learning curve. Yeah, cut, cut it in half. Yeah. Do you think a lot of millennials focus on the end result and they don't think about all the tough things and then they either get in over their head and they don't get the results they want so they quit? Or do you think they give up knowing it's all this work and they kind of don't want to put all the work in and spend the money. What do you feel like yeah. holds millennials back from building social currency? Because I feel like in the new economy, if you have social currency, that is the game. Like you have yeah. leverage. Oh, you big have income, time. You have, big time. You have choices. You, yes. Yeah. So what you, do you have ownership, them? right? Like, and this is where like a big thing that my, you know, everything around me with founders, that's why we spell own inside founders too. It's like, it's ownership, man. It's, it's, you start to own your life. You own your destiny. Like it's time that you take true ownership, right? Instead of going and doing and working a nine to five and working for somebody else's dream, you start living the life that you deserve, that you want to live. You can travel, like you can, you know, literally get paid to travel now, right? Like some of my friends that, I, that, that I'm interviewing um, for season two of Leaders Create Leaders, Jeremy Johnsey, I mean, the life is unbelievable that he's built because of his social currency, beautiful destinations, right? He's got the largest following for travel right now in the world. He's got some of the best content creators working with him, and he's literally working with some of the best brands traveling all over the world and getting paid to do it, and that's his passion. I mean, it, it, and he did that in literally the last like two years. Like It is happening right now, um, and I think the number one thing that holds people back I would have to say, or other than the fear and the ego, is the instant gratification that they're looking they for. Want right they now. want it right now. And even, listen, I'm an, I, it's hard for me to even have patience, right? Like, I want to go, go, go. You're like that too, right? You want results right away. But you have to realize that this is the long game. It's the legacy game. When you're building your social currency, it's, the, it's legacy. It's something that you have to realize that it is the new age it's like Ancestry.com, right? Yeah. It's like the new age, like sh proof of everything that you've done throughout your all life, your work, all your work. In a hundred years, your freaking kids' kids are gonna look back and see what you've done. It's that important. It's a lifetime, you know, it's a lifetime plan. So you have to like realize that it's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take time, it's gonna take consistency. But I can guarantee you that if you do it, I've proven that 
in a pretty short period of time, right? Like within a year, it will start to pay off. You will start to see those results. And then all of a sudden you'll be able to have that circle of influence, have the new, new streams of income, doing what you love. You have freedom. You have all these things. You're, you're fostering your creativity. You know what I mean? And you know, it's fun. It all, and it's also, it's also just a lot of fun. Um, so, but you gotta be all in. You gotta be all in and you have to be all in and not for just like, listen, you're doing this because for yourself, but most importantly, what you have to realize is that when you start off, it's really not for you. You have to drop yourself and saying, this isn't for me anymore. I'm doing this to impact and I'm going to find that value that I can bring to the table and offer to my audience consistently day in and day out. When you do that and you stop and you put yourself that's when you're a true leader. You put yourself last. You put your audience first. And you play the long game. That's how you really truly win. On purpose, off yourself. And I've seen that pay off 100% of the time. You know it. Not 80%. Uh, but you have to have 100%. The right you have to have the right focus of the long term game. You have to make sure what you're doing now is connected to a purpose that's going to help later on. 100%. I love that. And now let's let's real quick. Uh, I've been to Newark where you run Founders. Yeah. Um, you've been creating a lot of noise. Uh, the mayor of, of Newark, uh, a yeah. lot of people in New Jersey are, are, yeah, are was... really excited about what you're doing with the inner city, with startups, with business, with uh, the ecosystem over there. Um, I'd love to share with the audience. I mean, there's going to be a lot of hungry millennials watching this. And by the way, guys, our number one focus when we do these videos, we're thinking in our head. How can we make sure we're fully authentic? We, we bring our experience, but how can we make sure we give the audience the best value possible? That's all we care about. Yeah. But I think Founders is awesome. I've spoke there. I've met some people. Man, there. you killed it. I mean, we should definitely do, if you can, some drop people. some B-roll of Peter at Founders, man. It was amazing. And uh, thank you, dude. You, you, you impacted so many, so many of those young entrepreneurs. And for those of you that don't know about Founders, um, I created it because I, you know, after building that social currency and the exit, like I got asked to speak in a lot of places. I've actually built companies. I got one of the top, I'm one of the top 100 most influential people in tech in Silicon Alley. So I've been speaking in New York City in Silicon Alley. I got asked to speak at Silicon Valley. I've been able to go to Chicago to the incubators in Chicago. I've been able to, Dubai. I was just in Dubai, but like I've got to see these startup ecosystems that were being built in these major cities that were supporting young entrepreneurs, supporting new businesses, and though how those ecosystems brought resources, mentorship, things that really gave, um, you know, the, the right opportunities for these entrepreneurs to truly succeed. And then by doing that, the companies like Ubers of the world, you know, Airbnb, um, all these really big major companies that we've seen that become like multi-billion dollar companies in less than 10 years have come from like accelerators, right? These accelerators and incubators. And I said to myself, why aren't we building those ecosystems and accelerators for young entrepreneurs in inner cities for minorities? And then I found out a fact that less than 1% of venture capital goes to minority founders. Me being a minority myself growing up in the Newark area, being a, getting involved in gang culture growing up, you know, hustling, doing things that I, I completely could have gotten in trouble with that. I was going down the wrong path. And luckily I had a second chance. A guardian angel looked after me, wake me up. And I said, listen, I cannot do this. I care about my reputation. I care about my family. I care about my future. I'm going to start funneling my energy to business. And that's what I started doing. And I struggled, dude. Like, I failed. I didn't... People looked at me when I dropped out of college as a failure, as an example, as what not to do. People doubted me. People just... It was, it was hard, man. It was really, really, really tough. And it took me 13 years of overcoming adversity and pushing through, even during the recession of 2008 to 2010, when after I made millions of dollars and then lost it all and then had to figure out how to make it back again, you know, again, going all in on content, building Elite Daily... And, um, I think that's the coolest thing, by the way. Thank you, dude. People can't make millions. You can make it, lose it, and make it back. <laughs> dude, that was that was tough, man. And I owe it to my um, I owe it to my mother for inspiring me, telling me how she lost everything when she was young to a fire, and rebuilt things. By the way, after this interview, do not miss our last interview we did. Yeah. At your place in Newark, 
I think for there's sure. Value shared. You shared a Man, lot of we, stories. we always so check that. that interview out too. We'll post it below as well, or we'll post it above. But uh, check that interview out too. So to full circle, I decided to bring that ecosystem to Newark, to the inner city where my roots are from, to help minority entrepreneurs. We give a lot of, we give it all for free, mentorship. We, I built a 12 week accelerated program called Seed to Scale, which goes into mindset of an entrepreneur, emotional intelligence, leadership, and then it turns into, after those three weeks, into business development, from business development to marketing to sales, how to pitch, how to be able to turn your company and scale it, become profitable, and then if you need to actually get investors, we're launching a uh, crowd fund um, to help minority entrepreneurs tell their stories, raise capital, and then through that crowd fund, uh, fund us being able to take the concept of founders to other inner cities, looking for other leaders in those neighborhoods, Compton, Detroit, you know, Camden. So if you're out there and you want a founders in your area, definitely comment, let me know. Comment below, guys. I appreciate it. And if you're a young entrepreneur and you want to be in a really, really amazing, dope uh, environment where we empower one another, you're rubbing shoulders with other passionate, ambitious entrepreneurs, and you want to actually get the mentorship and learning of how to go from an idea to actually proven concept, go to founders.com, apply, um, and it's dope because while you're building, you're in an area where we're making impact together. So we can get involved with the youth, we get involved with feeding the homeless, we do things with real estate, economic development, working with the mayor's office and other leaders in the community. So uh, it's pretty amazing. I'm very selective with what I really promote because I make sure it's, it's, it's not only authentic, but it really is genuine and makes an impact. Yeah, man, it's a you. movement. It's it is, movement. it is, man, it is. And some of the kids are, that, that, I've, that I've met there, that I've spoken to one-on-one, -on -one, we did a lot of one-on-ones there, just have so much passion and they didn't have a lot of hope and belief from the people around them and you give that to yeah. them, it's amazing. It's, it's something that everyone should be a part of. And what's crazy that you didn't even mention, you kind of mentioned it, but they get access to like some of the world's best speakers, like Lewis Howes just spoke, I spoke. Yeah. Um, I know Steve Ryan, Rutherford, Super Bowl champions, Ryan Blair. Ryan Blair. Like, they get access to these yeah. I basically stars. use my social currency to build that circle of influence and then I'm able to now bring all of that circle of influence to founders to offer their time as a donation through the nonprofit to speak to these young entrepreneurs and you know, come bring it up, bring it all full circle. So, um, all yeah, good. dude, it's amazing. Check it out. Check the link right there below. I appreciate uh, you guys for checking it out yeah. and for really spending time with us. I know time is super valuable, so we appreciate it. Uh, one thing to leave them with simplified. What is the action they need to take? Um, obviously check out founders, but what's the action they can take right after this video? Because now matters that they can improve their life. What's the one thing they should do versus most people watch a video. They get pumped. Then three hours later, they forget about it. What can they do right now after the video to make sure the sticks, to make sure they really get on the path of becoming a successful and thriving entrepreneur? What's the one or two things? Write something. I mean, I would tell you like the number one thing that you can do if you want to take it serious. Look, we all have a phone. We're blessed to have a smartphone. Um, I would challenge you. I want you to make a video, a 30 second video, if you want 60 because of Instagram's rules no more than 60 seconds, and I want you to make a video, it doesn't have to be fancy, and I want you to talk to that camera on your phone about what your purpose is in life. What is it that is your gift that you wanna share with the world, that that's gonna be the number one thing that you promise, that you make a commitment to yourself and to that, the people that watch that video of what you're going to do to change the world. What is that gift? And I want you to post it, and I want you to tag me so I see it. And, uh, and then let's build. Love it. Appreciate your time, man. I've loved growing with you because we both level each other up. Challenge yes. Together. We have a lot of things planned. By the way, it's for life, bro. We, for have life. A, we have a lot of stuff coming out together. Yes. We're going to try and add value. Oh, yeah. Ourselves. And we, we're working on something together, too. Um, I'm looking forward to putting that out. 2017 is going to be a big year. Appreciate you guys.